Okay, so uh, I'm Fang Min Yu. Today I'm going to talk about escaping settled points, and this work is joined with uh, Grant Schoenbeck. So this is a very long paper, but it basically has two parts. The first part is we analyze a general family of stochastic process on uh, RD space. And then we show three possible applications for our and uh, our conversion rate results uh, by applying that to evolutionary game theory dynamics on social network and some possible connection to the stochastic gradient descent. So uh, this is a pretty general topic, and I, I will try to first go what is the 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 work about. So instead of the or of all these three area. I think our result is more applicable to the intersection of these three results. And this distinction is very important because um, in the current era, a lot of people is very interested in stochastic gradient descent. And if they are not interested in agent-based modeling, then they may find this result is quite limited and less relevant to their uh, research interests. So the outline of the talk will have two parts. The first part, we will try to tell you what's our conversion results. And then in the second part, we will show one of the applications that mentioned in the papers. And notice that this motivating example is actually the starting point of this project. So for the first part, um, the process that we are interested in, we named it a reinforced random walk with some function f or a vector field f. It's a discrete time stochastic process in RD space. Here, d is a constant. And uh, it, um, amid the following decomposition, it will be, you will have f and u. So f, it, we will call it a drift, which is the expected difference of the movement of this process. That is the difference between xk plus one and xk and because we are in Euclidean space, so we can have these additional things. The second part is the noise parts. Uh, so the condition, the, norm, the expectation of the noise condition on Sk should be zero. And this denotes the noisy behavior of this random process. And finally, you will have a step size is one over n. That is uh, determine how fast does this process move around in the in, uh, in a uh, Euclidean space. So we can consider the movement of this process given xk, you first move, you, you first have a deterministic movement determined by the drift, and then you sample an uh, unbiased noise, and you scale depending on the step size one over n. So this is the process that we're interested in. So this process is fairly general. Uh, it contains, is uh, it, it kind of captures a lot of different process interesting across different area. The first one is uh, agent-based modeling. You can consider n as the number of agents and xk is like a state of the, the populations. So in the dynamics of social network, you can think as xk is the, num the fraction of nodes with opinions one and each round a single node of this is opinion. So you can use this uh, uh, sometimes you can use a uh, reinforced random work to represent the state of the process. And the second part is uh, it also captures a lot of heuristic local search algorithm, uh, in particular in early stage. So here you can consider one over n as your learning rate, and you can use this heuristic algorithm trying to find local minimal or a zero of some functions. So uh, before jump into what conversion result we show, uh, let's first go through a concrete example, which we are also going to use this in the second part of the talk. Uh, it's called a node dynamics. It's also proposed by Grant and, and I. Yeah. So it's an opinion formation dynamic on a social network. Every node have a binary opinions. In this case, the dynamics will have a, a function called update function f and you have a nodes in a complete graph. Initially, every node have a binary opinions, and at each round, 
a node will uniformly at random pick, and it will first compute the fraction of opinions one in the whole social network. And then he will update his opinion to one uh, with probability f on this f uh, xk and zero otherwise. So this is the, the process. So if you are familiar with uh, opinion formation, uh, this process captured a lot of previous uh, model work, like voter model, when, where you are going to update to a random, uh, a random opinions among your neighbors. Uh, iterative majority, this would be a step function. If you have more than half of agents is have opinion one, then you are going to update to one. And iterative three majority, which is something between the majority and the voter model process. So, and this process is also, you can use a reinforced random work to represent that. Um, the SK itself is indeed an Markov chain on a real line. So, in this case, uh, so let's go through let's, this slowly. Uh, given xk, we first compute the drift of this process. That is, the first we compute the expected number of nodes opinion one after round one given xk. So in this case, you equal to this line. Uh, the first term is the number of opinions one uh, in round k uh, before. Uh, uh, at the end of round k, uh, before round k. And the second term is the probability that the selected nodes update into opinions one. And the third term is the probability that the selected node is indeed opinion one. So you can write down the expectation in this, in this form. And you can call these whole terms uh, the drift of this process. And then using this, you can understand the expected behavior of the fraction of no with opinions ones can be determined by this function f. And uh, going back to the reinforced random work, you can plug in a noisy noise term there, and we know the expectation of that should be zero, and this is a well-bounded uh, noise terms. So here, uh, let me introduce some terminology. First, uh, given these three functions, there are three special points, which is zero, half and one. One and zero are, uh, uh, the, all these three points are fixed point, that is f of x equal to zero. If you are starting there, you are going to stop there uh, in expectations. On the other hand, uh, the solid dots zero and one are consensus states and they are attracting fixed point. And the center points is the the half points is a set of point or a non-attractive fixed point or repelling fixed points. So the question that we're trying to an answer is given a function f and u as the n sufficiently large, how does this random work behaves? So back to our node dynamics, you will notice that the, if we can answer this question, we can know that whether this uh, process can converge to consensus, that is zero and one or one states. Overall, the process were going around uh, this real line for very long times. And this pro problem is also very well understood uh, in some special case. Uh, one particularly useful approach is called mean field approximations. So if your noise term is well behaved, and as you earn large enough, a lot of time you can approximate the whole process, the whole uh, random work as a solution to the corresponding ordinary differential equation or a dynamical system. And uh, this is formalized and studied a lot of times. Like for example, Nick Vogels in 1995 already showed if your time span k is linear to the n, then the behavior of the random work capital XK can be well approximated by the solutions of the uh, ordinary differential equations. So using these results a lot of times, uh, you already get a lot of interesting results. Uh, in particular, if a lot of, if your state space, most of points are a uh, regular point, that is your FX is not equal to zero, then you can track the random work by solutions to this, uh, solution to the ordinary differential equation. And this, a lot of time you can already show interesting results.
uh, I think that's year CC a lot of work already use this one to show their, their main results. Uh, but things kind of become change, uh, become strange at fixed points. So at a fixed point, you will notice that the solutions to the ordinary differential equation will be a concept, you will stay there forever. Um, the Bowmore's method basically tell you that as long as your time span is linear in terms of n, the random work will be also stay at a fixed point for long, uh, as long as your k is linear. But this is uh, not very complete characterizations because we know that eventually this process, this the random work should be escaping this set of uh, should be escaping this set of point or non affecting fixed point because for the noise, as long as the noise is good enough. So our question, our question will be how fast can this process, can this random work escape such set of points? So, um, so in this case, notice that everything is constant. Uh, except the n here and the number of steps. So in this work, we show that uh, if the noise turn and the reinforced part is good enough, then you will have uh, it take a log n times to escape a neighborhood of the of such uh, non tracking fixed points. So uh, the lower bound is quite simple. You just go back to Volmo's method and understand the, the proof and go through that again. You can show you need to take at least a log n times to escape any constants both around uh, fixed points. And then the second part is the upper bound, which is the most difficult part. Uh, we show you can escape this set of points if the following condition holds. Uh, first, the noise turns is a martingale difference. That is, the expectation of continuous explanation of S K is zero everywhere, and it's bounded, and it's noisy enough. Here, the condition for noisy enough is the covariance matrix of this noise turns is positive definite, and the 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 smallest eigenvalue should be uh, greater than some constant. And the fixed point itself should be hyperbolic. That is, uh, the drift as you go away from this fixed point is increased linearly increased. So after this, con uh, given these conditions, and you can show this upper bound result. And the proof is quite complicated, but the idea is quite simple. You just use a lot of concentration bonds and union bonds, and you can prove that. Uh, I don't have time for this, so let's go to the next one. Uh, for the second part would be how to apply these things to interesting process. So let's consider uh, dynamics on social networks. So in this, in this part, uh, we were interested in how does the community structures affect the consensus times of uh, their opinions formations. So there's a lot of terminology. Let me introduce that to you. So in society, there's a very important phenomenon called echo chambers. And that is, uh, people is going to influence by their neighbors. And if your graph have some community structures, then a lot of time you are going to form uh, uniform opinions within community and have disagreement with across different communities. So we are interested in how does this uh, process affect each other. The first is the process of agent updating their opinions. The second is the graph connections. Uh, in particular, we are interested in consensus time. That is, how long does this process took for the networks to reach consensus? That is, everyone agree on a single opinion. So we use uh, node dynamics, which we uh, uh, introduced earlier. That is, uh, each round a node updates its opinions and the update rule depending on some fixed function f and uh, the fraction of the opinions among the neighbors. So here you, are, you will be parameterized by a, a update function f. And our graph structure is super simple. Uh, it's a plenty community uh, graph. So it's a complete graph with weight. You have two community with equal size, and the weight of A and H within a community will be P, and between different community will be one minus P. 
So in this case, the value of 2p minus 1 capture how strong is the common structure. If your uh, delta, which is equal to 2p minus 1 equal to 0, then your p is equal to half, so you have a complete graph. And if your delta equal to 1, you have two isolated things. So back to our question, we are interested in given an uh, updating process, uh, what kind of delta will affect, uh, uh, will affect the consensus time? So we were going to expect, given that if your delta is very large, then uh, there exists some very bad initial configuration such that you, will, you are going to take a lot of time to reach consensus. On the other hand, if your delta is very small, then we expect no matter what initial configuration you start from, you are going to reach consensus very fast. So our theorem is a dichotomy theorem, which saying that if your update function is a majority-like update functions, then there is this some threshold delta star, such that as long as your delta is greater than that, there is this some very bad initial configuration, such that you need a lot of time to reach consensus. On the other hand, if your delta is smaller than delta star, then no matter what initial configuration you start from, you are going to reach consensus in a logan time. And this is tied by uh, coupon collection problems. So I don't have enough time. So let me go through that. this very fast. You can project the process into two dimensional space. One is the fractional opinion one in committee one, and the other is for committee two. And using that, uh, zero and one are consensus states. So at the end, we are interested in how fast does this process reach these two points. And if your delta is very large, you are going to, uh, if your delta is very small, you notice that the only attracting fixed points would be 0, 0, and 1, 1. On the other hand, if your delta is very large, then you will have some additional attracting fixed points. So using our previous results, we're showing that uh, if your delta is smaller than delta star, the, uh, the only attracting fixed points are the consensus state. So you can apply our uh, previous result and showing that it will reach consensus in unlogged times. So I think that's, that's all. Thank you.